Our meeting tonight is now open for the sharing of testimonies of healing through Christian science. Bruce. Well, I'd like to thank Craig for those fine readings and uh, had so many wonderful passages in there that are so inspiring and helpful. And one of them was the story of Jonah, who cried out from the belly of hell and God heard him and released him from that circumstance. And it also included the condition that Jonah listen and follow and obey the divine leading. Well, the story relates to me very closely because, well, for one thing, it makes me very grateful for the uh, so-called unauthorized literature that we have available here at the Plainfield Church because there's one particular piece that helped me at a point when I was very low in my life. And I guess you could say that I also was crying out from the belly of hell. But I got the book Dominion Within from written by Reverend Kratzer. And Mr. Kratzer wrote with a lot of love, but very simply. And as a result, it connected with me very much so. It gave me a lot of hope and encouragement at a time when I very badly needed just that. And uh, it spoke to my heart. So that book really means a lot to me. It uh, lifted my spirits and gave me a, a closer connection to God. And like I said before, more hope and encouragement and finding the way. It also uh, helped me prepare myself from coming to the Plainfield Church for which I'm endlessly thankful for because it was not until after I got here and got some teaching here that I learned that I also needed to listen, follow, and obey the divine leading. But as a result, my life is immensely happier. I was much more healthier. I feel more strength and encouragement and enthusiasm for working for God. So I'm very thankful for everything that's going on here at the Plainfield Church. Thank you. Linda. Thank you very much for the readings tonight. I'm gonna to want to express my gratitude for the, um, all that I'm learning with the pure, clear teaching of Christian science that's offered here at Plainview, Plainfield views that I'm gaining here through, about Christian, uh, through Christian science about children. Most of my work through the years has involved children, and the time I spent in college was uh, uh, in education-based courses. But now I'm being instructed in how to see others as God sees them. This is lifting so many limitations I have put on myself and others. Working with a Plainfield practitioner and using the practical teachings has been very transforming, especially how I view and work with children. I have witnessed Christian science in operation in so many ways, showing that nothing is impossible to God, nothing too small or too great for healing. And it's purging expectations that the world has attached to certain ages and stages. I now have a deeper appreciation and respect for the spiritual lives of children, and that lifts my thought above and dissolves the limitations that human laws have placed on these precious young ones that have so much to teach us. I'm grateful to be able to use my experience to help ch children now, but with the pure science of the Christ, the Christ who loved little children. Over the years, in different ways, uh, different experiences, uh, from working with special needs children, my old, older children in my own home, and others' children, I have witnessed disease, diseases healed, contagion prevented, behaviors modified, and restrictions lifted, just to name a few. And I'm so grateful how Christian science works in such every detail of our lives. 
I'm also grateful to be losing a worldview of children for the view that Christ Jesus came to give us and Mary Baker Eddy wrote about it because of their understanding of God and his creation. I'm very grateful to be here tonight and very uh, grateful for this church and its teachings. Thank you. Nancy from Texas. Go ahead, please. Good evening, and thank you for the readings tonight. I would like to express gratitude for Christian science and its practical application to both physical and emotional problems. There isn't a problem that hasn't been healed in Christian science. From broken bones, sickness, addiction, to depression, relationships, business issues, mm -hmm. you name it. Someone has applied the healing truths in Christian science to everything out there. My very first healing that I took part in happened when I was eight years old. I had developed a wart on my foot that made it difficult to wear shoes. It was painful. My friend told me that her mother burned off her warts with a chemical. I thought that sounded pretty easy, so I asked my mom if she could take care of it. Well, she sat me down and told me that maybe I should try to pray about it myself instead. I attended Sunday school regularly, and I knew enough about man's dominion over everything in the first chapter of Genesis, and that God was very pleased with his creation, man. My mom also told me that the choice was mine to make, Christian science healing or have a doctor remove the wart. I decided to pray about it myself and proceeded to do that every day for a few days. In the meantime, my family went to visit my grandmother for a few days. While we were there, I had my healing. The wart on my foot slid right off, leaving smooth skin beneath. I was so excited that I ran to tell my mom, who was in the kitchen with my grandmother, who was not a scientist. Grandma had just been berating my mom for raising her five kids in science and not taking us to doctors. And here I came, eight years old, and treating myself and having a healing. Grandma never brought up the subject again to my mom, and my mom was very pleased. So I'm thankful for Christian science and its practical application to whatever challenges we might have in our daily lives. It truly is the comforter which Jesus promised he would send to mankind. I'm also grateful to Christ Jesus, Mary Baker Eddy, and this church and all its members. Thank you. Jessica, Alabama. Jessica from Alabama. Go ahead, please. Yes, my name is Jessica Glasgow, and... Uh, I look at things in life, and uh, I suppose we all have a times where we struggle with good, with all good things, looking at good things, because there's so much going on in the world. But uh, I do look at uh, Mary Baker Eddy's writings, and I find, I guess, comfort and wisdom, and I ponder the words in science and health and prose works and I uh, I find myself marveling at it because uh, it won't be long I reckon before it'll be nearly 150 years old maybe more than that by now it was written in 1875 and uh, I, I love how she described the raising of Lazarus and other things in there, uh, like the account of the woman having her teeth back and the, the one who had their sight back and things and other things in prose works. And uh, it's so fun to read the science and to see that miracles are natural and that all things are possible with God and uh, and uh, I love giving testimonies and uh, asking questions and things and 
my email is Jessica Glasgow, and that's G L A S C O two zero one five at gmail dot com, and that's all lowercase. Jessica Glasgow two zero one five at gmail dot com. That's all lowercase, and uh, I also love the podcast, and I I listen to y'all's episodes eh, every week or so. I go back and listen to them, and I love the uh, music hymns. They calm me down and soothe my soul, you might say. So I really appreciate it, and I love the sound of uh, Bruce's uh, voice. For some reason, he sounds soothing to me. and Actually, all of y'all sound really soothing to me, and I love y'all's testimony meetings. Thank you very much. Thank you. Gary, go ahead, please. Thank you, Craig, for those fine readings on God's creation being nothing but good and man being nothing but good in truth. I love uh, the lesson on uh, loving, learning to love your enemies. Uh, this was a big lesson for me, uh, and I'm grateful to uh, Mary Baker Eddy and Christ Jesus for telling us and sh explaining to us how and why we should love our enemies, bless those that persecute us, pray for those who despitefully use us. It was uh, many years ago, my freshman year in college, I was, um, uh, I enjoyed athletics and I was in my very first game of my freshman year, uh, someone from our opposing team broke my leg. And it was uh, done in such a way that it appeared to be deliberate. I don't know how else to say that. And as uh, I was being repaired, uh, I, I was mentally in anguish. How could somebody do this. I mean, what what could cause somebody to do this? And I was angry. To make matters worse, it was uh, suggested that uh, it might not heal perfectly, and I might not be able to participate in sports ever again. And as uh, as I was thinking about this and praying about it. Um, the teachings of Mary Baker Reddy and Christ Jesus to love our enemies kept coming to me. And fortunately, I had a good practitioner visit me at the time who uh, helped me to see that hating, holding hatred, uh, was only detrimental to, to me. And that uh, it was important that I not hold hatred. Well, I forgave that person. It took a while, and it took quite an effort on my part to forgive that person. Um, I guess the person must have had a pretty tough life to be able to do something like that, and I forgave him for that. And I expected to be able to do everything that God ever wanted me to do for the rest of my life, and I looked forward to it. And I'm grateful to say that my leg healed quickly, and it healed well. And I was able to participate in that sport again for the next three years, and actually do quite well. Um, and enjoyed it and uh, participated in it with much more humility than I had before and was able to do everything and anything that uh, God wanted me to do ever since then. And I'm grateful for finding the Plainfield Church and a practitioner in this church who healed and who 
taught me many things about Christian science, about life, uh, for which I am forever grateful. And I am uh, very happy to be here with you all tonight. And um, thank you again for all your, for, for the fine readings tonight. Thank you. Shorty. Good evening. I am happy to be here tonight to share God's care and praise his holy name. A relationship with a family member that has been strained for so, quite some time has finally opened up in a most harmonious way. I have always said little olive branches and have prayed about this with the support of my practitioner, never giving up on God's love to heal the situation. I received a letter a few days ago filled with gratitude and caring with a lovely message. And just yesterday, I had the opportunity to have a conversation on the phone that was very friendly and warm. I plan to take my time and listen for God's direction with this new beginning and always pray about how and when to communicate. I am so grateful for this unfoldment of God's love and how he manages every detail in our lives. Once again, quote, the Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. Thy mercy, O Lord, endureth forever. End quote. Psalm 138. Glory be to God. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Luba from Ohio. Go ahead, please. Thank you. Thank you so much for tonight's reading. I'm so grateful for all I have been learning concerning Christian science and for all that is available at this church. Recently, I began looking for some very important documents that I'll, I'll be needing very soon. I began looking everywhere, knowing that nothing is ever lost. After a while, I became discouraged. So I just sat down and prayed to God, the all-knowing. Mind will show me the way. Within a short time, I got up and felt directed exactly where to look. Sure enough, there it was. How enormously thankful I was, and I am now. I am so very grateful to God and Christian science and to all that I have been learning, and I'm very happy to be here this evening. Thank you. Benjamin. Yeah, thank you, um, Craig, for the wonderful reading. Um, in the last uh, few, few days, and um, last few days, I've been reminded, um, God has reminded me that there's no place that he is not, and also that I cannot be where God is not. It's uh, almost, it's impossible. Um, that also nothing can separate us from the love of God. And I have found comfort with this truth. And um, I found comfort and strength. Um, every time that I'm wondering, so this truth keep reminding me of this. And um, I was also reminded also as well of incident that happened a few years ago. And when I traveled to the Philippines to visit my family, and I never experienced um, earthquake before 
uh, uh, read it in the newspaper sometimes. I saw in the news on TV, but I haven't actually experienced it. But one evening, um, I was in a hotel with my wife and uh, the earth was moving and the whole electricity went off and there was chaos all over the place. People were running. I myself, I really didn't know that day where to run to um, in the human sense of things. I ran to one thing I knew that evening. God, I ran to him in prayer. And I prayed that evening. And this truth came to me that day, reminding me that I was in the presence of God. Not even the earthquake has the power to separate me from his love. And that with this truth, I stayed calm even when everybody else was running around. I was calm. I told my wife to be calm, that it would be okay. And it was okay. There was calm all over the island and no life was lost despite the magnitude of the earthquake. And that was very thankful to God for never left us alone. And I'm so grateful because if I, it wouldn't have been possible for me to understand the truth the way I did if I did not have Christian science in my life. I'm so grateful to God that he brought me to this church for everything that Christian science has given to me. Thank you. Thank you. Jeremy. My daughter has been visiting for the past few days, and it has been a God-given opportunity to share the truth of Christian science with her and to do what I can to leave her with a positive view of this church and Christian science. We've had, great, had a great conversation the other day where I was able to share in a really natural way the synonyms of God and how working with each of them has helped me in my time here. I was actually incredibly surprised how it just came up and it felt really natural. <laughs> and then on other days, certain other things have come up where I've been able to share how, you know, living, trying to live by the golden rule has helped me, or how Mrs. where Mrs. Eddy says, whatever blesses one, blesses all, on page 206 of Science and Health, how that's helped me. And I'm just so grateful that she seemed happy to hear all of it and to ponder each of those concepts. It's been really wonderful. And then the years before I came here, I did not speak well of church or religion at all, and my daughter heard a lot about it from me. So for me to come here and benefit from from this church and from Christian science is something that was unexpected by me and her. And it has taken much learning, patience, and practitioner support to get to a place where I'm able to speak to my daughter about Christian science in a way that makes sense to her. And we have a way to go, perhaps, but her journey has begun whether she realizes it or not. So that has made me really happy. And so I'm just very grateful tonight for Christian science as it is taught in this church. And for all the blessings it has brought me and my children and the world. Thank you. Thank you. And now I have a testimony from Imogen in Australia. Good evening. I am so grateful for Christian science and the pure teaching we have here at Plainfield Independent, showing us how to worship God rightly and truly and purely. We are taught at this church a very clear way to practice pure Christian science. We begin each day with a lesson, with the daily duties, and our promise freshly made to God each day to do everything rightly for Him. 
and this is such a marvellous protection. I have found this way of life protects us without us even being fully aware, perhaps, of all the loving and caring blessings that are going on. Out walking a few days ago, I was turning into a major shopping centre when a delivery trolley full of merchandise became out of control. It whizzed by me with only a few centimetres to spare on my left side. And as I was thanking Father that I wasn't hit by it, um, it whizzed back, coming back the other way across my right side, again missing me by mere centimetres or about an inch just missing my nose, my foot. It was just extraordinary because it happened so very quickly. It was completely out of control. I didn't have time to react humanly at all because I didn't even see it coming either of those times. So I'm just so grateful because Mary Baker Eddy tells us about God in her textbook, quote, He who is immutably right will do right without being reminded of his province, end quote. So God always does rightly for us. It was a beautiful reminder for me that it's my job to study the lesson, to perform our daily duties, consecrate my thought to God, read the Bible, read the textbook. That's what I'm supposed to be doing. And when I do that, of course... God's law is in complete operation, and as Mrs. Eddy expressed it, he who is immutably right will do right. I'm so grateful to our dearest Father, Mother God for protecting in all our ways. Thank you so much for saving me from that accident. I'm so grateful that our Father is always on guard for us. And I'm so grateful for all that Mary Baker Eddy did to bring Christian science to the world because it was a very wonderful thing that she did and completely selfless to withstand the hatred of the world as she did and give us her revelation of Christian science. Thank you so very much, dearest Plainfield Independent, for the pure Christian science you teach. I'm learning so much from our practitioners and teachers here, and I am very grateful. Thank you all. From California. Go ahead, please. Hello. Thank you so much for uh, everyone helping with this beautiful prayer gatherings. I would like to express my testimony. <laughs> express my gratitude uh, for so many helps on everything about my life, my work, for so many feelings with the signs of the Christ, not only for me, but for our five members of the family, other five. Um, it was so wonderful to have raised the children without any medicine, without any medical assistance without anything, all the four of them for all their lives. I can never be grateful for that ever. And I cannot imagine any other way. And um, this uh, time I needed to find some keys, very, very important keys. And um, I had look everywhere. I had prayed, nothing. Uh, nothing is lost in the kingdom of God, and this is God's kingdom, no matter what. And uh, just lightly prayed and declaring those spiritual truths. And I have looked at this place with maybe about 60 bags of things, clothes and things and everything, because it seems that that was the place where the last, uh, the key was seen. And uh, I, I went for the whatever, 10 time really to look all around was a lot of work. But this time, I, what came to me is, why am I not really, really using what I know? I know the spiritual truth. 
Uh, I know I have learned a lot. I have practiced a lot. And why am I just looking for a key and not really doing my prayerful work? So uh, that day I just sat down in that place before looking at anything. And I prayed and I just said, God, you know everything. And me as a reflection, I know everything you know and you want us to know as a loving God what we need to know. And I just prayed maybe less than 10 minutes. And I I just opened my eyes and I just waited to see what I was directed. Well, I can tell you these bags that I have opened and look and everything, I just went straight to one bag without even thinking. I look around, there were the keys in this one bag that I went straight. It is so amazing when we really, really use this science of the Christ, all the spiritual truths, it's everything opens, the doors and windows and everything, the love, everything. I, I was just thinking, how come I didn't do this really, really well from the beginning? And I'm just sharing, hopefully nobody does it uh, later, but as first, first, as it is taught in uh, science and health with key to the scriptures. Thank you so much, all in plain faith, for this beautiful, amazing, wonderful church. Thank you. Florence, Florence from Georgia. Go ahead, please. Thank you. Thank you, Craig for the beautiful readings with many, many rem reminders in the passages. I have a testimony from Kenya, and she said, we were experiencing a severe drought around Nairobi in June, early July 2022, as the rains were delayed. I asked a Plainfield practitioner to pray with me, and she requested the Plainfield Weather Committee to also pray for us. She reminded me, that the truth of a perfect God and his perfect universe, including Noresho, a suburb of Nairobi where we live, can lack nothing as a divine idea. It is perfect now, the only way God knows it and maintains it. And then we pray also, open our eyes, dear Father, Mother, that we may see your glory everywhere. Let's press on only with the truth. He never faileth. I responded, can God furnish a table in the wilderness? What cannot God do? As Mrs. Eddie said, yes, I needed to trust God more. The Celeste practitioner replied, it will rain. And she advised that we should work with chapter 62 from Mary Baker Eddie, her spiritual footsteps by Gilbert Carpenter, Tinian and Jr., and some of these beautiful prayers were based on Mrs. Eddy's own work in Divinity Course in General Collectania, the Blue Book. Soon after the prayers, there was gentle rain, first for an hour one night, and then for several hours the following night. Then it rained gently for a few nights. I was so excited when I woke up and saw the ground and leaves beautifully wet. I was so grateful for our Father, Mother, God's loving care. Then the rain stops for a while. Due to more gratitude and prayers, there has been some gentle rain between August 11th and 13th, the date of this testimony, in Laurentia and Ruaraka, and also I have heard in Kilisi at the coast and upcountry Nyeri and Kitali. I continue to pray that this lovely rain will continue to bless us all. I am so grateful to God, Jesus Christ, Mary Baker Eddy, and also to the fact practitioner and the selfless and loving Plainfield Weather Committee for praying for us during this time. It's so lovely, really, to see God's glory everywhere. Thank you. Mary, go ahead, please. Good evening, everyone. I have a couple of testimonies to read tonight. The first from South Dakota. 
Thank you, Plainfield, for taking up the cross and faithfully representing the Christ and the Comforter as brought to us by Mary Baker Eddy. The weekly lesson sermons are wonderful and the roundtable presentations full of inspiration and support. I appreciate, too, having the watches to consider prior to pondering the lesson each day and being reminded of the daily duties, too. I love having my 24-7 access to the reading room, which is the Plainfield Christian Science Independent website. Thank you all. The altitude being re regained is so appreciated. Thank you, God, and thank you, Plainfield. And then a testimony from Washington State. I would like to express my gratitude to God for leading me to Plainfield. I can never get through a Sunday morning roundtable without tears of joy from understanding more of God, myself, and everyone as one with Him and learning to live it. It's really hard for me to express to you that deep inner feeling of love that comes when you understand even a little more clearly than before of God's allness. A couple of months ago one day, I was rejoicing in the tremendous growth in my understanding of my oneness with God and basking in the tremendous possibilities that that meant in working for God. That same day, I tripped and fell very hard on the cement. At first, it was hard to think any good thought. Then, no specific thought came to me, but an awareness of the allness of God. And so this picture of a fallen man wasn't real that it couldn't have happened. The symptoms of pain and serious injuries started leaving quickly after that. I could move again, and I got up and climbed in the truck on my own. Something still was not right with one of my knees, so I texted and asked the Plainfield practitioner I had been working with for support. I've been learning to completely trust in God only, and the most important thing I'm learning is living the truth. I understand moment by moment. What I mean by that is completely loyal only to God and not to believe anything is real about me or anyone else that isn't from God or isn't God-like. Before I fell, I was hurrying and tripped but didn't fall. I caught myself. Instantly, the thought in my head came from the round table was the teaching of no hurrying. So I slowed down but only a little. Then Era tried one more time to trip me up. It said, good thing it wasn't your dad that tripped. His legs are so weak he would have fallen. I did not rebuke this quickly, so I must have believed somewhat that it was my strength and my material legs that saved me rather than God. This time I tripped again and went down. I knew what had happened. I could see how my thinking hadn't been stayed on God and his goodness. It seems, I could, it seems that sometimes whenever I'm experiencing tremendous growth that it, the opposite will try to come in. Something would always happen to take me back down, so to speak. Thank God here at Plainfield it is taught how to handle this aggressive suggestion of animal magnetism that there is some other power other than God and the forms it takes to try to get us to believe that it is real to keep you from doing God's work. I'm learning that also as we grow in our understanding, the things that aren't a part of us come to the surface to be seen for what it is, a lie, and for it to disappear. So, there's nothing to fear. It is but an opportunity to prove God's allness and goodness, and that there is no other presence or power apart from Him. With help from the practitioner and seeing this wasn't from God and holding steadfastly to the truth, I was almost 100% well by the next morning. And within five days, I was helping my husband and son unload a big U-Haul truck without any effects of the fall. Thank God for Christian science and to all, all that are working for him at Plainfield. Thank you very much tonight for those beautiful readings, for our beautiful music, and, and the wonderful testimonies of how people are truly demonstrating the science and making it applicable to their lives. In the lesson this week, 
in Isaiah, there's the quote, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. I've been thinking about that the last few days because how important it is to keep our peace and to not get dismayed and troubled and upset by perhaps the news of the day. And I was wondering how I could do this more. And one of the ways was read tonight about thou shalt have no other gods before him, before that one God. And as was beautifully said in this last testimony, to always be bringing your thought back to him and not to believe or fall into the belief that there is another power apart from him. In the little book, Fragments, ascribed to Mary Baker Eddy, there is this beautiful quote on page 151 where Mrs. Eddy says, In God are to be found all beauty, color, fragrance, light, harmony, rest, wisdom, love, perception, understanding, form, the all-seeing eye, all-hearing ear, all the senses of man, all substance, all creation, all consciousness, all mind pictures, all memory, all assimilation, digestion, action, strength. I thought, wow, what more is there than to find all those beautiful things in God? And in doing that, in turning our thought always to God for every answer, we will find that our mind is stayed on Him and that we are kept in perfect peace. I'm so grateful for these wonderful lessons we learn here in this church, for the truth that is ever unfolding to each and every one of us, to each and every one of his dear children. God bless you all, and have a good evening. Thank you.